So James, uh, my name is Saeed and I'm uh, the head coach and the co-founder of Fala Cricket Academy. And uh, today we will be talking about certain uh, Western cricket players of India, uh, starting from Kedar Jadav, Munaf Patel, and uh, you know all these kind of elite professional cricket players. So let's uh, begin with you first. Uh, I do understand that you are a very elite player, uh, James Edward Franklin. I was going through your profile, and uh, yeah, I happened to come across with a very interesting fact that you are the uh, second uh, player, uh, a New Zealand player, to take a hat trick in Test cricket. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, quite kind of a freakish event, really. Um, yeah, just got lucky one day a long time ago, many moons ago, and um, against Bangladesh and Dhaka. And I think, uh, obviously, if you're lucky enough to take a hat trick, whether you know your club cricket or your first class or even international cricket, you've got to have a, a certain amount of luck involved in it. Um, and I just happened to get lucky for five minutes or, or ten minutes, however long it took, and the stars all aligned. And uh, <laughs> I also saw your first class, uh, first class uh, record, and it shows a lot. It talks about close to ten thousand runs. <laughs> that is some awesome talent, I would say. Yeah, I mean it's okay. I think if you look in the in the history of of all first class cricketers. Um, it's, it's okay. It's nothing outstanding. Um, what, what I guess I have been lucky with is the fact that I got to play professionally for 20 years um, and pursue a passion of mine for a long time all over the world, which is which is amazing. Um, but the actual stats, yeah, they're okay. They're, they're part of the story. Um, I guess they kind of keep you being able to play year after year after year because it means that you're doing something right, you're performing, but... Um, the stats uh, only tell one part of the story in the whole journey, I think, in my career. That's great. That's great. So I would like to understand from your perspective because I, you know, kind of am very close to the player, which is Kedar Jadov, who is representing India right now. And he's also sure. a Western uh, zone Indian cricket player. So what do you ha have a take for him? Like what kind of player do you think about him as a uh, cricket player for international level? Well, oh, special talent. Um, I mean, there's so much talent in India, and that's, that's the amazing thing with India, I guess, with having such a vast population um, compared certainly to where I come from, New Zealand. We've only got 5 million people, whereas obviously in India, you've got millions, if not, <laughs> you know, over a billion people. So um, it's just about, obviously... In India, being able to find the talent and, you know, the academy systems, the private academies, um, the cricket infrastructure uh, is hugely important in the pathway for young cricketers. And then obviously being able to pick out these true talents like, you know, Yadav, um, you know, he's come to prominence, I guess, over the last few years um, through IPL and then obviously in the Indian team and, and doing remarkably well. and. Um, you know, I guess he's only at the start of his career in terms of international career and trying to stay in that Indian setup and, and keep trying to perform where he can. And if he doesn't find himself in the Indian team, because we all know how strong the competition is to actually be in the playing 11 for India, whether it's T20 one days or test matches, it's incredibly competitive because there's so much good talent. Um, you just got to you just got to keep at it. Um so look, it's it's wonderful to see the likes of Yadav um, involved in it. Um, you know, he's one of very uh, many, you know, very talented batters within the Indian cricket system that are all vying and competing against each other to try and be in that top six, um, which is a good headache, I guess, for the likes of Virat, the likes of Ravi Shastri. Um, to be going through and discussing all the time who actually is in their final 11 or in terms of batting for every game that they play, which must be exciting for them. So moving on to the other guy, which I personally know is Munaf Patel or Munabhai. And yeah. uh, I believe he was your uh, teammate in Mumbai Indian squad as well. So what do you yeah. have a take for him as well? Oh, uh, he's a bit of a joker. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, he's a hard, he's a hard case. Like um, I, I played against uh, against Munaf a little bit in international cricket first before we became teammates, and um, always found him, you know, a, a challenging bowler um, to bat against, and very much a line and length bowler. Um, always at you, very aggressive. Um, but then once you become a teammate of Munaf's. You see the the humour, the lighter side of him, the not too serious side of him, and he was a great guy to, to hang around with during my time at Mumbai Indians. Um, I think it was a season or two seasons that we were together, and I thoroughly enjoyed his company. Um, but he's a guy that you know can be proud of what he's done in the game of cricket to you know go from pretty humble beginnings to work his way through the system and, and ultimately find himself in the Indian pace bowling attack and test cricket, one day cricket, T20 cricket, um, you know, he can be immensely proud of that. Great, great. So uh, coming to the other talented guy, which I would talk, like to talk about is Shardul Thakur. He also comes from the domain of Mumbai. Uh, like we are more basically talking about Martian cricket players right now over here. And we have multiple cricket players who are, <laughs> as you said, that it's a huge population. There are multiple mm. talented players in the lineup. And there's one guy who is coming into the picture that is Shardul Thakur. He, yeah. had, uh, he plays for CSK right now and a big believer or under the mentorship of MSG. So, any take yeah. for him? <clears throat> well, I think it's a good start, you know, from a from an IPL point of view, for him to be working under the stewardship of, of Dhoni and, I guess, Steve Fleming down there at CSK. But two very wise, um, sensible heads for someone like Thakur to come through and work under. Um, again, just another exciting talent. Not, not a batter, is he? He's a bowler, so... Um, you know, can bowl fast, can swing the ball. Um, and again, at the moment, the problem for him is, I guess, there's, again, such talent in the pace bowling stocks in India. So, you know, he's part of that group of bowlers that are always going to be jostling to try and make the Indian team, uh, whether it's T20 or test matches. And it comes back to that. It's a good selection headache for Kohli Shastri to have to have you know a pool of bowlers like they have a pool of batters to constantly select from and then it comes back to how well the likes of Thakur does in IPL how, how well he does in the first class uh, Ranji Trophy competition um, and just to keep trying piling up uh, the wickets to keep putting pressure on or forcing the hand of selectors to pick him but um, from a talent point of view awesome he's got all the raw ingredients it's just now how he applies it and whether he can keep doing it consistently obviously there'll be injuries along in the, in the journey because it just comes with being a fast bowler um how you deal with that what your resilience is like coming back from injuries um but again from the very early signs of what he's done particularly from an ipl point of view um I, don't, I mean, I don't personally watch Ranji Trophy because we don't get it where I am on TV, but um, mm. uh, he, he could go on and play for India and have a great career for India. It's, it's up to him. He's got the raw ingredients to do well. Okay, and uh, uh, I would like to talk about one guy. Like uh, He has been around the Western zone of Indian cricket for a long time, and uh, I would say he, was, he has been a very unfortunate one. Uh, Wasim Jaffer, like he has scored scored tons of runs in um, first class cricket, but you know uh, we couldn't see him on the brighter side of the game. Uh, well, I mean, when you say Wasim Jaffer, you're talking about a legend of of first class cricket in India. You know, like I think his record speaks for itself. I think he's one of the highest scorers ever in Ranji Trophy history. Um, and I guess just the, the mere fact of his, of his age, his longevity in the game, being able to consistently turn up every year and just keep producing um, and still have the want to produce. Um, he's obviously been involved in Indian cricket teams before, um, but I guess his true legacy is in terms of what he's done for the teams that he's played for in first-class cricket and the way he's carried himself, he's, he's a great bloke. I've come across Wazim a few times and 
very humble, um, but obviously always had the desire to keep going and keep improving. And, you know, what is he? He's, is he 40 now, 41? Like just being able to just keep going and going and going um, and having the desire to do it is just remarkable. That's wonderful. So there are a few talents from the uh, Western Zone of Indian Cricket which are coming up and I'm not too sure uh, whether you have so heard certain players coming into the picture. Another guy who happens to be my brother that is Samad Fala. So I'm just going to give you know talk very uh, lightly about that because you might not be aware about the uh, Maharashtra Cricket but uh, uh, because because we are talking about Kedar Jadav, he is one of the uh, you know fellow mates of them. So I'm going to share you the screen to show you their capability as to how they have been in their uh, stream. So Samad Fala, he's uh, close to 400 first class cricket uh, wickets in uh, domestic season. So just uh, give me a hands up uh, whether if you can see my screen. Can you? Starting to share with me, yep. Okay, so this is uh, one of his bowling. Obviously, there are 400 first class wickets, but then only one. Oh no, here it comes. Yep, left armor. Yeah, left armor. So he was kind of recognized by Yurat Singh in the recent first class game. So uh, when we talk, talk about first class game, uh, what do you think uh, uh, when you, you when you, you were the, uh, part of Mumbai, Mumbai Indians cricket squad? What did you understand? Like what should what a youngster should do for him to get into that particular spot where everybody is right now pertaining to IPL? Um, well, it's just going to come down to performances, isn't it? And whatever level of cricket he's playing at the moment, um, and and I guess there's always got to be an element of of luck in terms of timing um, and opportunity, you know, like if he performs at the right time and then there's an opportunity potentially at a franchise where they're looking for a left arm bowler um, and he performs at maybe the time just before the IPR auction or for a period of time before the IPR auction, then that might work in his favour. Um, all he can do is control what he can do and that's run in try and swing the ball, try and get wickets, try and win games for the team that he's in and then selection further up sort of takes care of itself if that makes sense. Um, train hard, look after your fitness, eat well, you know, continually analyse his own game and, and look for areas that he can improve, you know, talking with his coaches or, or mentors that he respects and trusts. And hopefully you put all that together and that will lead to success and selection and higher honours further up. And if that's IPL, if that's maybe one day playing for India, um, you know, this, the sky's the limit for any young talent. Um, it's just how much hard work you want to do and whether it's smart work as well. You know, some people just work hard for hard work's sake. It might not necessarily mean it's the right work. So that's where the mentors and the coaches come in and the guiding voices to try and keep you as an athlete or as a, a bowler in this instance on the right track to potentially where you want to head to. And it sounds as though this young bowler player wants to play IPL and ultimately play for India. So um, I think putting all that together is a, a good starting point to hopefully having longevity in, in a great career. Great, great. So, uh, James, uh, I was going through your you know, profile and I understand that you are right now coaching Durham uh, County team. So, how has it been? How has your experience been over there? It's been really good. Um, I've been based in the UK for uh, five years now. So, I've been coaching up here for the last year or so. Obviously, it's been pretty tough the last couple of months here with everything that's happening with coronavirus all over the world. Um, so our season at the moment is on hold, very similar to probably what's happening in India with the IPL and what have you. Um, so we're just playing a waiting game, but 
so far last year and, and through the winter here, um, it's been really exciting, and we've got a we've got a good squad of players. We've got some good talent, um, and the cool thing with it for me is that I still get to work in all three formats. I, uh, you know, it's a it's a squad that plays three formats: T20, 50 overs, four day. Um, so. For me, that's that's a huge interest in to try and develop these players and their skills for all three formats as well, not just necessarily pigeonholing players just for specific formats. You know, they might be more uh, streamed towards a particular format, but that doesn't mean that you don't try and help their growth of their game to be better at another format. So that's always the exciting part for me as a coach is to is to try to keep improving the players' skills and, and then work it all together to try and fit into what the team ultimately needs. So interesting that you mentioned about the, uh, you know, the global pandemic, the coronavirus, and we came across with the new guidelines of ICC um, with multiple things coming into the picture. So yeah. there are some four to five pointers which are really you know, concerning for a cricket player that, okay, you cannot sub, uh, apply saliva and uh, you cannot give your hat to the empire or your shades to the empire. So technically, if we are talking about in cricket, it takes the game away from the bowler side because <laughs> uh, the batsmen were already on them, on them with good quality willows coming into the picture and good talents coming into the picture. Now, after the power play, uh, uh, you know, guidelines, now this is the Corona guidelines which you are looking at. So the bowler yeah. will completely lose the reverse swing factor, which you might think, with that particular thing. Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not the greatest help to bowlers, is it? Being, or losing the ability to use your own saliva to shine the ball. Um, but it's a need for right now for the world that we live in um, and trying to keep, you know, players healthy. Um, and that's that's the first most important aspect of it but is that, yes, it's disappointing for cricket, but let's look at the big picture of actually the health of the person first and foremost. So I guess that will always be under review um, as the world deals with this pandemic and, um, you know, maybe for the short instance of coming back to cricket, yes, we might not be able to use our own saliva to shine the ball, but that's not to say that maybe six months after the resumption of cricket that they change that to, yes, we can get back to what the no normal was. Um, it's not going to be fun for bowlers, let's face it, straight up, and they might need to look at other measures of how bowlers will be able to shine the ball, if at all. Um, I, as a bowler, know that it was important to be able to use the slide to shine the board to get it to swing to make it a fair competition with the batters. Um, so, look, I don't think it's just as black and white as not being able to use your saliva. Um, how they try and work it to make some sort of fairness for the bowlers, I'm not too sure. I haven't really looked at those new rule changes in too much depth myself. So, um, on the face of it, it's it's not great. Um, but the important part is the health, the health, and reducing the risk of potentially players getting infected with this COVID because um, we don't want that. Right. So, take, uh, would you suggest, like, technically, can we go with certain kind of options where, like, we, we use the, you know, uh, new ball for the first 10 to 15 overs, and then if we want to, you know, apply the reverse swing factor, then we would have certain balls which have been already, you know, shined, uh, you know, all the shine part which is done in in-house at the store, and the empires could, you know, do those changes during those overs by, you know, obviously the captain's permission. Can we do that? Yeah, possibly. Yeah, possibly. I mean, and that's the point is that, okay, if you're, if you're not allowing saliva to be used on the ball, then what are you allowing? So let, let, let's find out what is allowed. What, what can you do without it being deemed illegal as what we know now? 
you know, we're not allowed to tamper with the ball with your fingernail or using external substances. Um, so if you can't use saliva, then what are you allowed to use? So let's find that out um, because, you know, the bowlers do need something to try to make a fair contest. Saliva was used and was allowed to be used because you could buff the ball using your saliva and that would aid the bowler in terms of shining the ball, which if you shine the ball would aid the bowler in terms of being able to potentially swing the ball. So if you're taking that away, then what are you giving the bowler now? So let's find that out. Right. So, uh, James, I have a few audience who have been, who have questions for you. So I have a young kid, 13 years old, all-rounder, left-handed. Hi, good evening, sir. I'm Rupesh Chaudhary. I am batting all-rounder, and I want to know how to play pull shot and what are the drills for it, which I can do at home. I don't think it matters if you're left hand or right hand. Um, yeah, I think um, a good drill to use is, is, is to firstly start with a tennis ball um, and just getting underarms from a coach or a parent um, or a fellow teammate. And you try and get a, you know, a, a bucket of tennis balls and just simple underarm drills where um, the person that you're working with, they, they go down on one knee, they underarm the ball sort of around your chest to shoulder height and it's just a quick fire so again with a tennis ball if you miss it it's not going to hurt you um, and you just try and keep your head nice and forward um, and just try and play the ball and just trying to get your hands through the ball as quickly as you can um, and then that can be progress if you feel like you're making good contact all the time uh, that can be progressed back to uh, cricket balls so you're taking uh, you're starting to get a little bit of not fair factor but you know that there's a bit of consequence that if you miss it it's probably going to hit you on the body not not hard and you always want to do this with a helmet of course um, and it makes you really watch the ball and then once you start to get a good feel for that and you're feeling like you're making good contact uh, take it back to a bowling machine and start on a low speed uh, whatever your technique is you would have worked that out with your coach uh, but trying to get in a good position where your, your head's forward you don't want to be neutral or back with your head you always want to have that intent of going forward um, and being able to snap your hands through uh, the pull shot always looking to try and hit mid wicket at least um, and then as you get comfortable with a lower speed just start cranking it up a little bit you know, and as you get more comfortable taking the speed up, maybe a little bit shorter. And then you'll all of a sudden find over a period of time, whether that's one month or six months, um, hopefully when you get to that point where you're, you know, I don't know, 70 miles an hour off your nose, feeling comfortable, that you'll look back and say, well, I started with tennis balls, now look where I am. And always trying to progress yourself that way. So I have one more guy, and uh, he like there is a tournament which MI that is Mumbai Indians has initiated, which is known as Mumbai Indian Juniors. So right. he has been a you know a top ten score uh, you know run scorer into that particular league, and he has a question yeah. for you. That hello and good evening. My name is Ayush Pawar. My question is. What fitness drill should I do at home on daily basis? Yeah, what I do would be different to another player on my team and different probably to all all other players and teams that I played in. Um, I just like to get to the ground early, um, get comfortable with the surroundings at the ground and probably do a little bit of work uh, before the team drills or the team warm-ups. So try and find a coach and do my own sort of batting drills or my own little bowling drills. Um, and then obviously go through the team warm-up and then depending on what we're doing first, I'll just warm up for that accordingly. Um, so if I was if we were batting first, I'd go and have more throwdowns in the nets or whatever drills that I felt worked for me. Um, and then likewise from a bowling point of view, if we were bowling first, 
I'd go and have a bowl in the middle and make sure that my run up was good. I felt comfortable. I felt smooth. I felt like I was bowling in a, in good areas, you know, accurately and, and getting what I wanted, whether it was a little bit of swing or cut. Um, if it was a one day game or T20 game, making sure I got my slow ball variations out or Yorkers just to feel like I'd tick and felt comfortable that I could produce those skills under pressure in the game coming up. Um, and just making sure that I left myself a bit of time before the match started, you know, to, to sit and make sure in my mind that I was well and truly tuned in and ready to go rather than feeling all rushed. I always like to have a moment, sort of five or ten minutes before the game started that uh, I was ready, but I could just have that moment to myself to make sure mentally I was in the right headspace to go out and give my best. So, uh, the other question which I have is from a girl who is a cricketer, and she says that she's a top or top order batsman. And uh, hello, good evening, sir. I am Trishti Lagar, and I am a top order batsman. I have a question. When you are playing on drive. And what drills I have to do at home? Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's girl or boy. Um, uh, again, I'd, I'd go back to tennis ball work, underarms. Um, and, and the important thing for me, particularly with an on-drive, is being able to step straight. So if you, let's say, for example, this girl has a, a middle stump uh, guard. So she takes middle stump. Um, actually draw the line for another foot or two feet down in front of the crease so you can see where your front foot lands in, in relation to that straight line and is, is she right handed yeah yes she is a right -hand. So, so making sure that her, her left foot never goes across that middle stump line towards cover so she always wants to make sure that her foot always steps straight, her left foot always steps straight down that line. And that'll give her better access for her bat to come straight and to be able to hit on drives. Okay, so that's just one little thing. There are other things that you can start to look at, what happens with her shoulder, with her head, uh, where her bat flow is. Um, but I think, firstly, that's a really another metre down past the crease onto the pitch, and you can see exactly where your front foot's stepping once you play the shot, and trying to keep your your left foot on that line, never going across it towards cover or mid off, and then seeing where that ball ends up, straight drives to the umpire, straight drives uh, down to mid on, uh, start with tennis balls, start with underarms then move to cricket balls, then bowling machine, and then throw downs and just progress it slowly. So, uh, I actually, I have more, 120 more questions waiting up, but that would take a We don't have time. time. <laughs> <laughs> but I will conclude with one last question from Chinmay Helche. Sure. Hello and good evening, sir. I am Chinmay Helche. I want to know more on straight drive and some drills related to it. Slopping shot. Um, just intent and practice really um you know it, the, the the slog shot you got to have the intent and the want uh, to obviously do it um so you got to get yourself into a nice strong base with your legs um and obviously practice i mean it, it's hard to all of a sudden in the game just go right i want to try a slog shot and think that you're going to pull it off it doesn't happen that way you got to practice it um, so you've got to practice your positions and, and what's a powerful position to get in and then generate the bat speed um, to be able to hit the ball, you know, not just five centimetres past the boundary. You've got to think you want to hit it 50 yards past the boundary. Cause then the hopefully you, yeah, because then hopefully you miss hit because more often than not, you'll probably miss hit it. You still want your miss hits to maybe just go for six rather than your perfect shot just go for six. You want your perfect shot to go 50 yards past the boundary. Um, so that comes down to a bit of training, maybe building up a few muscles. Um, and, and, yeah, um, and then for a straight drive, just, just like what we've spoken about with, with that girl example, um, you know, straight lines, making sure your bat flow is good, stepping straight, 
lots of repetition of hitting balls um, straight in a nice straight V and defending in a nice straight V, never defending out to cover. Um, yeah, but for me, I think simplicity is the key. You know, don't don't think fancy drills too much. Nice simple drills uh, is often the best way forward. Great. So, James, uh, I'll conclude the session for today, and uh, I hope uh, that uh, one, one once in a you know in your lifetime, or probably once in my lifetime, we happen to go you know physically meet in uh, yeah, obviously yeah, the uh, Maharashtra cricket, and I, we can talk more about all these kind of things. Uh, it was really awesome to have you around, and I really appreciate your patience with me. And no uh, hopefully we'll stay connected. Anything else comes into the picture, I'll always keep you posted. Excellent. So nice to talk to you, eh? Same to you, James. Thank you very much. All it right. was a pleasure. Take care. Yeah. Pleasure. Cheers, man.